Finally, it's 2021, but for much of the world, we're still in lockdown. It's easy to get discouraged about this and to look forward to the days when things get back to normal. But lockdowns are actually an amazing opportunity for self-development. In this video, we're gonna talk about five simple things we can do to make a significant difference in our lives as well as for those around us. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at Cambridge University. Personally, I find it really easy to fall into the trap like, woe is me, I just wish things could get back to normal. But over the past year, I've been reading quite a bit and listening to podcasts about how many of us are actually really fortunate that we aren't acutely suffering due to the pandemic. Instead, we've arguably gained the most valuable asset in the world, and that's time. And it's really important that we use this wisely. You see, there'll be some people who make the most of their time and come out of the situation stronger than before, but others will squander their time just going through the motions of everyday life and watching Netflix. I really don't want this to be you. In this video, we're going to talk about some things we can do to make the most of our time when we're stuck at home. Just a caveat to everything I say, I'm not saying just because we're stuck at home, we should expect more of ourselves and get stressed if we can't do everything that we want to. This is a hard time for all of us, after all, in some way or another, and we need to make sure that we're looking after ourselves and getting plenty of rest. However, for those of you who do want to start something new, but don't know quite what to do, here are some of my suggestions. So let's start with the top thing I recommend we all do during this time of lockdown, and that's learning a new skill. This could be something like learning to play an instrument, or something like coding, or even getting into cooking. The main thing is that we have to get outside our comfort zone. The thing with staying at home 24 7 it's there's nothing really challenging about it sure there's stuff like online school and university but apart from that there's nothing really pushing us to do anything technology has advanced so much in the modern world that we can pretty much sustain life just by sitting in the same place the whole day ordering whatever we need to survive from amazon but obviously living like this is suboptimal because there's no scope for personal development to do things which are actually meaningful for us in the long run things which we can look back to with joy we have to be willing to get uncomfortable the thing that helps me the most when thinking about this issue is the one year rule which I first heard from Ali Abdal. The rule is that we should do the things now which we would regret not starting one year from now and the key thing is just to start there's no point waiting for the perfect time because that time just does not exist. For example with this YouTube channel it was a massive step for me outside my comfort zone. Ask any of my friends or my family I don't like social media I mean I don't even have the YouTube app or Instagram app on my phone but I was toying with the idea of starting something on the internet for several months because because I had some ideas which I wanted to share with the world. And my main obstacle for this was the fear of putting myself out there. But I thought, oh no, I'll just wait till the perfect time until I'm really ready and confident to go out there on the internet. However, even during this lockdown, which seems like the perfect time, the situation wasn't so good for me. The university had pushed back our first day exams to September, so I still had a fair bit of studying to do every day to keep on top of the material. I thought if I don't start now, I might never get the opportunity, particularly as second year was only set to get a lot busier. So looking back, I'm really glad that I did take the plunge to start a YouTube channel because it's brought just an extra dimension to my life. It's really challenging me in ways and helping me grow more as a person and maybe that's something you could do too i'm not suggesting that you should all start youtube channels but hey it's definitely a good side hustle but putting yourself out there online in a positive way could make a massive difference to your life down the line and to people all over the world the second thing we can do in lockdown is to get fit i know that most gyms are closed but there's no excuse to sacrifice your physical health even during a pandemic as richard you would say there's no lack of resources just lack of resourcefulness even simple things like going for your daily walk or run or bicycle ride or even doing a home workout following one of the millions of tutorials out there on YouTube. These things will go a long way to improving your physical health, but arguably more importantly, they'll improve your mental health and help you perform better when you're actually doing your usual day job like studying. The third thing we can be doing in a lockdown is to get into reading or get back into reading for many of you people. In normal times, during the normal working week, it's often hard to find time for reading. But now without all the commuting time and various social obligations, we have more time to set aside for reading. The main thing to bear in mind is that it really doesn't matter what you read. Personally, I enjoy reading non-fiction books like productivity books because I feel they're more practical. But literally read anything that takes your fancy like Harry Potter or I don't know Lord of Rings whatever you people read the main logic behind this is because you want to get into a habit of reading so the easiest way is to actually look forward to reading rather than seeing it as a chore that you have to do so I know most libraries aren't open at the moment but maybe you have some old books lying around at home which you haven't managed to read yet alternatively if you do have a library membership take a look to see whether they have a, an ebook catalog because many of them actually do albeit the range is quite restricted if you don't like reading so much like 
a physical book, you can perhaps listen to audiobooks and take advantage of like the free Audible trial on Amazon or something. Personally, I really like listening to audiobooks and podcasts when I'm out on long runs or even like eating breakfast or lunch. Yeah, it's just a really frictionless way of being able to read. A really good app which I recommend to you is something called Goodreads. It's a website too and on here you can rate the books which you've read in the past and it'll give you suggestions about what books might interest you. And you can also create a centralized kind of want to read list and keep inputting like all book recommendations you hear from other people you might follow on the internet and also your friends and teachers maybe. The main thing as with everything in today's video is just to get started rather than trying to find the perfect time or the perfect book. Anything is better than nothing. The fourth thing we could be doing is building relationships and this includes spending more time in prayer if you're a person of faith like me as this is the most important relationship in your life. During these kind of isolating times many people are craving interaction from other people. So how about you catch up with friends you don't often talk to or even schedule zoom chats with your mates. I find that scheduling calls during lunchtime is a really good way of making the time to talk to other people because it's not too disruptive to the usual flow of the working day. And I especially prefer calls to just texting because a conversation flows much better and it's genuinely a lot quicker and you can get to the actual like deep meaningful conversations a lot quicker than just through text. I'll be honest out of all the things in these videos the relationships one is the most challenging for me because I'm naturally quite an introverted person and I don't feel I personally need relationships with other people for my own happiness so in a way that's quite a blessing during these times but one kind of extreme way which I've experimented with is to making a personal CRM so that stands for personal customer relationship management system which is actually a business term. Basically I just list all the friends from school and uni who I want to keep in touch with and I just note some basic things like how often I want to keep in touch and when's the next time I should be reaching out to them. To be honest this is pretty overkill for me and I haven't managed to keep this up consistently particularly during term time which is so much busier than other times but when I did keep this up during the summer for a little bit it really did provoke some interesting discussions with people who I'd never otherwise interact with. So this is something I'm potentially looking forward to doing again during the holidays if if I can get everything organized. Finally, a simple but a really important thing we should all be doing is to make sure that we stick to a fairly consistent sleep schedule. I know it's boring, but sleep deprivation or irregular sleep patterns can really hamper our progress in other areas of life. And particularly during lockdown, where the boundaries between work and downtime seem blurred, it's easy to push that bedtime later and later and to wake up closer to lunchtime than is probably healthy. A simple strategy if you're struggling to keep consistency is maybe to have an alarm on your phone when you start your nighttime routine. Routine. And a nighttime routine can be really simple. It can be as simple as changing into your pajamas, brushing your teeth, and crawling into bed with a book for 15 minutes. By having a consistent bedtime, we can start the next day in a positive way rather than scrambling because we've woken up too late and we're already behind in the day. So that's all for this video. If you found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. You might also want to check out this video which I've made about New Year's resolutions. It's still pretty early in the year so it's not too late to start making goals and plans on how you're going to achieve them. Remember, it's not important when you start but just that you do actually start. So anyway, take care and bye for now.